ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everybody in between. Welcome to another episode of the Chaps Chat Cats. It's a part of the Hoops Crew Media Network. My name is Jake, and I'm joined, as usual, by Sambo and Johnny. How are you, chaps? Tremendous. Pretty excited. (laughs) Excited. I'm glad you're excited. There's a lot to be excited about, John. Uh, We've got a game of Cats footy. We're not yet cursed with a week in which there is no Geelong footy. So, we've got that to look forward to this weekend. And that is the focus of tonight's show is Cats v Blues. Round 7. The preview. Can't believe, to be honest, that we're already... At round seven. Don't know where that's gone. You know, nearly a third of the way through the home and away season. So we're going to get into all of that. We'll talk team selection, what we want to see, etc. Then we're going to cross over to the Hoops Crew Patreon part of the show, which is just for our Patreon subscribers. We're going to do our match predictions, which we do each week. So if you want to be part of the show there, make sure you go on over and start your seven-day free trial on the Hoops Crew Patreon You get access to extended podcasts, early access for behind the play episodes with uh, Paul James. You get Wednesday News Wrap with myself and Ben, as well as VFL women's and men's coverage, which is exclusively for Patreon subscribers. The preview, VFL preview, will be out tomorrow, uh, Friday afternoon. So there's a lot to like there. So go and start your free trial. Let's get into the show. Just before we do, got one more piece of business to take care of and that is to say a big thank you to our network sponsor valhalla brewing straight from the gods the nectar of the gods valhalla brewing make sure if you're in and around geelong you go and check out the brew hall over in north geelong if you're more central in the cbd of geelong get along and check out the valhalla tap room feel like we need to go and do a bit of sampling chaps next time that we are, you know, in Geelong for a footy game. I think it would be pertinent decision-making from us. So, yeah, thank you to Valhalla Brewing. Let's get into it, chaps. We've done all the housekeeping, so let's talk it on the show tonight. Cats v Blues, the round seven preview. How, what are you both feeling going into this game? Obviously, Johnny and I talked at length about Geelong's soft schedule on the uh, Brisbane yeah. recap and how you just can't really learn soft. anything uh, from Cats games this week. Um, you weren't with us on the recap, Sambo. Um, no, so I'm going to handball to you first. What are your thoughts going into this matchup with the Blues? Uh, excitement. Um, probably supreme confidence as is our luxury being cats fans <laughs> that feel, feel feel pretty confident uh most weeks um yeah like you know football's football we could have lost any of these games that we've played uh we could could lose any of the ones ahead of us um but as far as i can see there's no reason to assume that's going to happen at any given time um we'll deal with that reality when it when it is upon us um, but until that time, then I yeah I see no reason why we can't and shouldn't win this game. Carlton are you know a good side; they're really getting, uh, you know, getting their sort of their act together over <laughs> over the last couple of seasons, um, and you know putting some wins under the belt and whatnot. Um, so it certainly will be, I think, a good a, a further test. But I you know as you guys, I'm sure you guys have covered. We have been tested, you know, thus far. Thus far, the result is any team, any condition. So until until the, the exception of that rule pops up, that's how I'm feeling. Yeah. Johnny? I can't really complain, say much different. Feeling um, normally going into a big game like this, I'll be a bit nervous about this time out, you know, getting nervous, a, bit, a little bit nervous, a little bit. Anxious about what's going to happen, but I tell you what, I'm still feeling very confident, very at ease. I'm more looking forward to a good game than anything else. And as Sam said, it's we're still six zero. We can go six one or seven zero at the end of the day. It's still a fantastic start to the year. 
Um, and so it'll be if if we get a loss early in the year, it it'll be a good way to see where our def deficiencies are in the game plan. But you know, as a loyal one-eyed cat supporter, there's not many deficiencies in our game plan at the moment. I don't reckon. But um, yeah, I'm just looking for, more looking forward to a really good game, seeing how the cats do stack up again against you know a pretty pretty solid outfit. Like they've got a good midfield. They've obviously got a really good forward line, and the defense is you know reasonable. You don't hear much about the Blues' defense. It's more about their midfield on attack. So yeah, I think it's going to be a very good test. And yet again, midfield will be up to the challenge. I reckon. No. But yeah, can't wait. Yeah. No, it's interesting. I'm just going to have a look at, I think you boys have pretty much summed up my feelings. Enjoying looking forward to another game. If you'd offered me seven and zip before the season, I'd have absolutely bitten your hand off. And if you'd offered me six and one, likewise, I'd be making a meal out of that hand regardless. Six and one, seven and zip, don't care. I'll take either. Um, so yeah, you're, you're in just a, a superb position as a Cats fan. Um, as we sort of joked about on the recap, Johnny, it's been a pretty fantastic position to be as a Cats fan pretty much since 2007. A um, bit insufferable much. for everyone else, but I don't <laughs> give a stuff what everyone else thinks. So you, let's have a look at the hear. last time these... There you go. Yes. No, you go. What do you I was hear, just going to say, tell me. What I've seen a lot of comments on videos that is talked about the Cats. People are just going, please, can you long just like rebuild? Can it just like go away? I replied to one <laughs> one person going, can Cass just like bloody rebuild and leave us alone? I said, what do you think's happening right now? <laughs> you're, you're looking at it. Yeah, did you just, <laughs> did you not think about putting the, the Bugs Bunny? No. <laughs> uh, <gift>. <laughs> um, all right, let's have a look at the last time we played the Blues. Got to go a fair way back. Round two of 2023, the last time we took on Carlton. The Blues emerged with a 13 12 90 to 12 10 82 victory. They had Charlie Kerno kick five goals, two. Owies three straight, Mackay one goals, one. It was Adam Saad, two, uh, 29 disposals, Cripps 27, and Kennedy with 26 for the Cats. Jessica Cameron racked himself up some Brownlow votes with a six goal, one performance to go with 25 touches. The other key stats winners were Ollie Henry, two goals, one. Hawkins, one goal, one. Cam Guthrie, 25 touches, and Isaac Smith with 23 disposals. So that was the last time out. And if you remember, I believe we went into that game without Tom Stewart in that one as well. So it was a tricky uh, matchup for us last time in terms of stopping Charlie Kerno without Stewie. But having said that, I think Sam DeConing was also playing through injury in that game, if I remember correctly. And I also just think Many players oh, we didn't have, Jack Hen didn't have Jack Henry either, now that I think about it, because he was out early in the season because originally the talk was, Jack Henry will play forward because Hawkins is going to be out, blah, 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 blah. Um, so there was a few players missing. Um, chaps, we're going to get into Cat's team selection now. Now, Sambo, you have seen the team selection. I've seen the team selection. But Johnny has not seen the, seen the team selection. So I want to get John's live reaction here to how the Cats are going about it this weekend. Um, so, Johnny, here we go. We need yes. your reactions here because we've got in Zach Tui, Reese Stanley, and Cam Guthrie returning for yeah, the Cats. Please. He was clear during the week. <laughs> um, Tom Stewart out injured. Conway omitted. Jai Clark omitted. But your thoughts, John, on the return uh, of Cam Guthrie? Absolutely over the moon. I had a feeling. But it was back in when you said, don't look at the team selection. I was like, that can only mean one thing. But yeah, it's they super dropped exciting. Jessica Cameron. Yeah. Guthrie back. Um, yeah, super excited to see that back. That just lifts, I think, the team, the supporters as well. It's just a good boost. It's a good boost to see him come back. Hopefully, it's not a preseason game where he gets the ball, kicks it, and is injured instantly. Um, 
but no, it's awesome to see him come back and just can't wait to see him out there again playing into hoops in a in a match. Um it's been over what over a year now since we last saw him, if not longer. And yeah, super, super excited. And I think if he's he's playing and he's fully fit, he's ready to go, he's gonna tear apart this Carlton team, I reckon. I reckon he'll be fit and firing and ready to bring a great victory for the Cats. He's, he'll be hungry, that's um, for sure. Yeah, he definitely should be hungry, Johnny, after, you know, the best part of, you know, a, a full season pretty much last year and then, you know, to miss such a chunk this year already, the first six games after, mm. you know, playing what, you know, 15 seconds of the match sim um to start the year sambo any concerns from you like would you have preferred to see him come back through the vfl or what are your sort of thoughts on on guthrie being straight back in i i'm pretty happy about it to be honest like it's you know um i think it's a little bit of a of a different situation because he did do it feels it feels odd to to us and to me especially because i didn't watch the match sim where he even got injured in that point so it feels to me like he hasn't played all last pretty much all last year didn't do an off season and now he's finally built back and, and coming in. But, um, you know, as we know, he's done a full off season. He did the pre, you know, the, the off season, the preseason. So they've seen a lot of, of what he's got to, to offer after that last major injury. And this one was a whole, a whole new, um, you know, less, less bothersome, clearly injury. Cause he's bounced back quick, um, quicker than, than the, the previous one. So I think that, it, it it makes a lot of sense, really. And, you know, you pointed out, Jake. He's just he's kind of just as likely to get the um to you know if there's an injury concern or a risk of any kind, which I don't necessarily think there is. But in that scenario, if there's no added risk, then you're just as much uh, just as likely in the BFL as the AFL. Um, you know, we've got a got a you know pretty big out with Tom Stewart, so it seems like a uh, a prime opportunity to bring him back. And yeah, like I said, it, I don't think he's as unknown of a commodity, obviously, to the club as he feels to us fans at the moment because they've had him for a whole off season and then they've been working back in with him. So I imagine they're, you know, as we know, they're the elite of the elite um, medicos and selection staff at Geelong. So I have su- supreme confidence that they're, um, you know, they're... Uh, fully aware and confident in his ability and his his risks. So yeah, I, I don't feel any any kind of misgivings about it. I as soon as they said he was he'd been cleared for selection, I did secretly hope, although VFL was an option, I did secretly hope he was going to get a run because um, I think it just I imagine he's really keen to get out there, and I don't think I can see a lot of benefit to giving in his scenario giving him a run in the VFL first. I was listening to Dangerfield's um, interview, um, round seven interview press conference today or yesterday, and he was saying talking about Ken Guthrie. And he was basically saying that he was for about a about a month, if not a bit more. He said he was he's been training basically at full match practice, just getting in there with match sims as well, and said he's going harder than anyone else in those match sims and during training. So in Dangerfield's eyes, he's up and about ready to go and ready to play his absolute best. So I think if Dangerfield's saying that, then it's good enough for me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I'm, you boys have captured my thoughts on it both times in that it you know gives the team a huge lift. He's one of those players who you know, is a bit of an accumulator in terms of the disposals he can rack up. You know, wouldn't surprise me to see someone like Cam Guthrie come in and maybe across the the, the next three quarters of the season, you know, average 25, 26 touches a game or something. That wouldn't shock me um, in the slightest. I like that he's named, and, and obviously, as Chris Scott always says, you know, um, don't pay much attention to our team selection lineup sheet. But, you know, he is listed on this, on the Cats website as playing as a follower alongside Tanner Bruin. I mean, this is the ultimate yeah, sort of so- selection headache for the Cats. They've got a great selection headache in that you're now having to force 
guys out of the team. You know, you're now Jai Clark. There's no room for you to keep just developing and getting games. You're going to have to win your way back in or wait until an opportunity arises because someone drops fitness or form or whatever. I think it is it is the perfect selection headache um, for the Cats to have. One thing, the other side of the coin, of course, um, in terms of selection headaches, um, is what Carlton's going through at the moment. I was just having a quick look at their injury list. Um, it's yeah. pretty horrific. Um, and as some some viewers might have known, you know, I, I like to have a bit of fun at the moment with making the thumbnails for our episodes. I don't have a lot of bitter feelings about Carlton. So the, the thumbnail this week was pretty tame, to be completely honest with you. They're, they're not a club that, in, that evokes strong um, annoyance from me. So I do feel for them just a little bit because we went through this last year. You go through the list, they, they have been pretty pillaged. Um, obviously Sam Doherty, you know, is one who's, you know, uh, had an awful injury with the ruptured ACL and torn meniscus in his right knee, but Adam Chera being out, um, who else was I looking at? Mitch McGovern, Adam Saad. Now Saad absolutely tore us up the last time we played, um, the blues last season. So uh, at the end of the day, my feeling on footy is it's professional football, you know, the, the 20 three you put out there, you know, the right circumstances, the right coaching, they, the right performance, they can get the job done. But um, you, we are seeing contrasting fortunes at the selection table this week in that Geelong have have the great uh, headache of just so many options. Carlton have the ice cream headache at the selection table where it's just like, ow, 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 ow. Um, as they should try and work out, you know, who, what they think their best 23 might be. Um, is there anything else from the cat side of things there on team selection that you would like to talk about before we move into what we want to see this week? Uh, I, I don't really have any strong opinions sense. on it, but I, I feel like there's probably the Conway thing. Is there, is there, is there any contention online about the Conway thing? Like are people still, uh, Confused there will by be. the way this is operating. Okay. <laughs> there, there's a Let little bit of issue, I think. Oh, I haven't seen. There hasn't been much, though, but it's the same thing that I said last time. Why not? Why not rest our young Ruckman, avoid him getting injured, and just rotate? If we've got two Ruckman that are fully fit that can rotate game in and they're happy to do one game, have a rest, do another game, do a rest, why wouldn't you? Yeah. And they're playing. They're both playing like exceptionally well, really. So, yeah. and so why would you? Why would you relegate one just because there's two of them? Why would you yeah. not play them both and keep them fully rested? <laughs> it just it, it, it makes a lot of week. makes a lot of sense to me. I don't know why people yeah. are so upset about it. Um, it. It's even if Conway was playing a little bit worse, I think there'd even be maybe more of an argument to keep him in if he was like had a lot yeah. of promise. But wasn't quite getting there. You'd maybe have an argument to to have him as the sub and let him play a quarter or two. You know, like just bring him out. But the fact that he's coming in and operating at this level, he doesn't really need just a quarter of, of experience here and there. He's basically ready, but he's not operating so much better than Stanley that you're going to kick Stanley out. So just keep yeah. keep swapping him. <laughs> keep swapping him. He's gain that experience again. Watch, learn from Stanley as he plays. Then he can implement mm. a little bit each game throughout the year, and then next year, I can see, I can see this year Conway maybe having two games in a row where he plays or three, and same with yeah. And, and Stanley, Stanley had two and then, earlier, I think we went two yeah. in a row. And then next year, I can see Conway starting to take a lot more of the load and getting that match fitness right up. So, if we got this opportunity to um, rotate the ruckman, do it. Mm. Keep yeah. him fit, t- keep him healthy, keep him fresh. And lower that risk of injury to Toby Conway. As as Cats fans, I'd, I'd be just saying, hey, let's not rush out of this perfect sweet spot we have right now. Like mm, we're not in the situation true. where it's like, damn, Reese Stanley's out for the season. We've just got to throw Conway in there, whether he looks the part or not. And we're not in a situation where it's like Toby Conway's injured again. We're just gonna have to roll with Reese Stanley all year and pinch hit Blixarves and stuff. Like it is. Like, nobody move. Nobody leave your seat. Yeah. Nobody shave your beard off. Let's just change, enjoy, like, your facial expression. 
You know, I almost did yeah, shave exactly. my beard off today, and then I thought, <laughs> you're not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> no change. <laughs> And it's just like that thing at the moment, the pattern is Stanley for two, Conway one, Stanley for two, Conway for one. Mm. Like there's not much better, I think, ways to ease your future in. And as I just said, let's not complain. This is an absolute sweet spot that so many clubs would, would kill for. Um, let's just enjoy yep. it as it unfolds. Um, let's move on though from team selection. Now we talked a bit about Zach Guthrie filling in for Tom Stewart, I think, on the recap pod. And I think uh, Ben and I talked a bit about it on Full Nuff Mode and the Wednesday News Wrap during the week. Um, and maybe you guys have a way to fit it into the section of what we want to see. Um, but, Johnny, I'll start with you. What's something yep. that you want to see this week, this Saturday night against the Blues? One thing I want to see is I wouldn't mind seeing mm -hmm. Sam Walsh, Patrick Cripps gain a whole heap of possessions again, like 30 plus, and have minimal impact because the Cats midfield is able to, Cats midfield, Cats defence are just able to nullify what they do and then our midfield do what they do best and just share the load and have no one get over 30 disposals themselves. But, you know, give. Crips and Welsh, their disposals that they like to use and have and let them play the way they want to play, but then just have their impact at a really minimal amount. Because I think, yeah, we've done that to all the teams this year. Let them have a couple of players that get a lot of disposals, but shut out the other good players as well and just minimise their impact. That's one thing I'd like to see. I like it, Johnny, and it has been the storyline this season for the Cats so far, as we talked about uh, on a few episodes previously, of just like, oh, you know, such and that's had 35 touches and 11 clearances, and this player's had 40 and, you know, whatever, and it's like, and they've lost by, you know, two goals. Uh, it's, it is interesting. Um, and you sent that article, I think, during the week, Johnny, about how the Cats of 2024 <laughs> are sort of forcing champion data to change the way they're sort of evaluating, yeah. you know, stats and the game. So always lovely to be ahead of the curb there. Sambo, what is one thing that you want to see Saturday night be the Blues? Or Saturday afternoon, 4.35, sorry. Yeah. yeah. I'm saying night. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I actually had something similar to John's, but John's kind of covered it a little bit, which is basically just... I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, no. It's good. It means we're all on the same page. We're looking for the same thing. Um, which is basically just the game plan working the way it works. You know, I think, I don't know, I will, I will admit, I don't know a lot about, I'm not an expert on, on the Blues this year and how they're doing what they're doing. And so, you know, experts or Carlton fans that for some reason are listening to this pod, feel free to correct me. But my feeling is that, that Carlton are a bit more offense first. They seem to be uh, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the their not that their backline isn't isn't strong or or um, you know, uh, pretty re reliant, but just in terms of the way they attack the game, seems to be front foot forward. Whereas the cats, although the cats are mm -hmm. playing a very attacking style of football, it tends to come from backline first, or or not necessarily even the backline, but defensive play rebound our, our 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 off the ball play whether that's our mid our forwards our midfield or the, or the back line they're getting it um you know and and turn the turnover game is where we you know where we really kill kill people you know um it's it's sort of mm. pretty a pretty uh deadly um turnover offense i think we're number one in the comp for scoring off turnover um, and so basically yes. to just kind of skew what I was originally going to say in something slightly different than what John said is that I would really like to see our back, our back line operating at peak efficiency, even without Stuart, you know, we haven't really touched on, I guess, the lack of Stuart too much. You know, we talked about Carlton's injuries and talked about Cam Guthrie coming in and b mentioned Stuart going out, but I guess the, you know, seeing them play half a game and come away with the with the donuts last week without him gives it a little mm. bit of confidence. Um, and I think we've, we've got a lot of players back there that maybe haven't really been cited as much as we might expect, like Jack Henry, like Sam DeConing. And sometimes I think that's because of the way Stuart 
is and how good Stewart is. And if it's not Stewart, it's been Zach Guthrie this this year. And if it's not Zach Guthrie, it's probably been um, Colin Jasny. So those other superstars, Sander Koning and, and Jack Henry, haven't sort of been called to arms quite as much. Um, but Sands, Tom Stewart, I would just really like to see Carlton frustrated because they've got a, such a deadly forward line. Um, I think, like John said, we'll let them soak up the minutes and the and the disposals in the middle. Um, but just, you know, really just sort of go, well, what are you going to do with it? You've got the ball, you've kicked it around, you've passed it around a lot. But every time you're going inside the for- inside your forward 50, we're cutting it out, we're, we're bringing it to ground, we're getting an intercept. Zach Guthrie's coming along for an intercept, or Jack Henry or Sander Coning are winning that winning their contest, um, and then just see that turnover game really, really firing. Because I think that's one of the potentials mm. against a against playing. You know, people are talking about our, our fixture, playing against a side that is attacking first and is somewhat in form and having a pretty darn good year, is that I think we'll be able to see that our backline will obviously be tested. But what that will hopefully allow is for that turnover game to actually perform at an even higher rate, because to to perform off turnover, you need the opposition to give you turnovers. And if if you're kind of this is especially evident in like the North Melbourne game where you're like, well, there's not so many forward pushes from them for us to turn over. So that's that's kind of what I'd like to see is that we win this game in a similar way with a similar ethos but it actually ends up looking way deadlier because of the opposition we're playing, not in spite of it, because they're so good and because yep. they're going to be pushing so hard. My The thing I want to see in my hope is that the back line really is on their game and we just see turnover after turnover after turnover to really frustrate the Blues. It's really interesting. Like I was just having a quick flick through like the different stats and that sort of thing, like to see where we're similar, where we're different. The kick to handball thing, like we're very similar between mm. um, Carlton and, and the Cats. You know, even uncontested possession, contested possession, we are very much in similar sort of ranges. Um, defensively, in terms of total tackles this season, Geelong's number one, Carlton are number two. Um, there probably are some key differences uh, in terms of efficiency. Carlton at 74.8% disposal efficiency. They are the number four team uh, in the league. Geelong at 70.7% are the second bottom team in terms of uh, of disposal uh, efficiency. Um, uh, but, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's the same. There's a lot of similar... Um, sort of areas, I guess, for these two teams. But that doesn't, of course, if you're just looking at numbers, it doesn't exactly have to speak to style either or the way um, that they go about attacking. Um, it, it is interesting, like defensively, Carlton, I remember it was at Jacob Wietering doing a really good job on Tom Hawkins. I think last time we played them, um, possibly mm. the time before, I can't remember. I think it was last last time. We only got one goal, one. Um, as far as what I want to see out of this game, um, I'm going to go just a specific matchup that I want to see. I want to see Mark Blixarves play on Patrick Cripps again. If you go back to 2022, uh, it was such a feature when we played the Blues and and really put a bit of a smacking on them. Uh, in a game that they were pretty fancy to be up and about in. And Mark Blixarves went to Patrick Cripps. And it's sort of like that Jurassic Park thing where, you know, the 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 new biggest nasty dinosaur comes into it. But T-Rex then shows up and chomps down on its neck. And it's like, oh, yeah, T-Rex is still like the, the, the baddie. And uh, that's kind of what it was like watching Mark Blixarves <clears throat> go to Patrick Cripps. Cripps normally the biggest bodied, toughest, most explosive, you know, tall, can rest forward type midfielder. And then it was like, oh dear, now I've got to play on someone who's bigger than me, just as athletic um, and can punish me going back the other way. I just want to see that again because I love those those types of matchups. Um, and I love the fact that Geelong have a Mark Blixarves to be able to do that. Not every team has a guy who can play ruck backline midfield wing um, and can physically do the job at any of those positions 
and can go to someone like Crips. So I'd just love to see that. There's only going to be so many more seasons we get of Mark Blixarves. Um, as sad as that is to think about, he is now entering probably that final stages. Uh, who knows? Maybe he's got another three or so years. I don't know. How old is he? Maybe he's, six. He's older than Mitch Duncan, which surprised oh. me. Oh, real. Um, that really shocked me. Um, so, look, we'll see how it goes. But I want to see Blixarves on Patrick Cripps because I've greatly enjoyed it in 2022. All right. That is like it. it. For us on the public part of the show, we're now going to cross over to Patreon, the Hoops Group Patreon, and we're going to talk all about our Patreon match predictions. So if you want to listen to this part of the show, if you want to watch this part of the show, make sure you head on over and start your seven-day free trial on the Hoops Crew Patreon page. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for hitting that subscribe button either on your favorite podcast app or on YouTube. We really appreciate it. Thanks to our sponsor, Valhalla Brewery. Uh, until next time, go Cats! Go Cats! Go Cats!